We're Simone and Giovanni, and over the last two years, we quit our jobs, moved to Mexico with our dog, got married, and began our journey to visit all 32 states of Mexico. In the last episode, we shared the lakeside town of Chapala. So in this episode, we're traveling an hour north to the city of Guadalajara. In this episode, we're sharing the perfect two-day itinerary as well as the best day trips to consider to help you make the most of your visit to Mexico's second largest city. So we're incredibly fortunate to be staying literally in the heart of Centro Historico, possibly with one of the best views in the entire city. So we're just going to show you our bedroom real quickly and then we're headed out for our tour for the day. This was our bed for last night and this is one of the things that we really like, which is the workspace. We have a nice espresso machine. Oh yes. It's like something that I love and we have a beautiful bathroom here. Oh yeah. And this is actually very spacious for a city bathroom. We've got a shower in there. Toilet in there, yeah. the basin, and bad robes. Yes. Probably the most recognizable monument within Guadalajara would be the cathedral, so that's of course where we're headed first. So the Catedral de Guadalajara was actually built in 1561, so it's very old, but if you look at it, you can actually see that they've maintained it very well. It's a incredibly beautiful structure and they actually still use it as a cathedral so if you wanted to you could go inside and attend a mass so we actually just went inside the cathedral quickly to to have a look and whether or not you you observe the religion wow in every town and city within Mexico, you're going to find a main plaza, which is what we're in right now. And basically how it sets up is there's usually what they call like a little kiosk, which is the thing behind me. And then there's a whole lot of benches and the locals will typically come here in the afternoon and sit here and have a coffee or have something to eat and they'll chat to one another. It's just like a kind of like a social spot. Guadalajara is the capital city of the state of Jalisco and of course you will find the Palacio de Gobierno or the Government Palace which is quite similar to the one that you can find in Mexico City but way smaller and as well it's very beautiful. So something that I actually noticed is on the, the balcony they've got a coat of arms which is actually the coat of arms that you'll find on the Mexican flag. It's an eagle eating a snake. I spoke with the security guy and he said that we can get inside there. I think it's a museum now as well. Interesting. We weren't allowed to film anything inside of the Palacio, but these are some of the pictures we took of the very large and eerie mural depicting Padre Miguel Hidalgo, who is known as the father of independence. We were totally, totally taken by surprise. Number one, we didn't think we would get in here. Number two, we were like, it's probably going to be boring, but it is not boring at all. Those murals are insane. It's an absolutely beautiful building. 100% worth your time. And just across from the, what do you call this? Palacio. Uh, Palacio de Gobierno, Government Palace. Palacio Gobierno. De Gobierno. De Gobierno is where you're going to find the famous pink and white Guadalajara, Guadalajara sign. As you can see, it is a very popular photo spot. Every town and city you visit with in Mexico is going to typically have colorful letters of the name of the place. But Guadalajara has got like a different marketing campaign around their tourism. So this is one of the only signs that you're going to find that's different to the rest of them with just the pink and the white. What pink is that? It's actually almost for the road pink. Actually, I think this center is with everything like content like Concentrate, concentrate yeah. together if you go to Mexico City everything is like far away from yeah. each, each other like uh, side scenes yeah it's actually only like one or two kilometers between points of interest where if you try walk the Centro Historico of Mexico City that took us an entire day to do it's like yeah. midday now and we're pretty much done with Centro Historico yeah Guadalajara is a really cool city. I'll say again, we're not city people, but so far it's been really nice, very walkable. Well, I'm really excited to hop on the bus to see like something outside of Centro Historico to see what the city really looks like. We're just heading towards the Hospicio Cabañas, which actually used to be an orphan, but now it has turned into a museum. An orphanage. That's an orphanage, yeah, an sorry, orphanage. my English sometimes, it's just like Gloria, like, like Lily, Lili. like Lily. How do you say in English? Helicopter. At least not here. <laughs> So you actually have to pay an entrance for that one. It's really not much. It's 50 pesos per person. We're not huge museum people, so we'd rather spend our time going on the on the bus tours. Actually, yeah, we should get one of those, Miller. Yeah. 
So we have read and heard about it. We know this before. Basically, it's a traditional beverage that comes from the states of Jalisco and I believe Chihuahua. And it's actually a fermented beverage made out of corn, water and pioncio, which is kind of like a sugar cane. Neither Giovanni and I or I have ever tried this before, so we're going to give it a go now. Chico, mediano, grande. Chico. She's given it to me kind of naked and she says give it a try and then there's a whole lot of topics that she can add to it so it's actually kind of like a very savory beverage which I don't know how I feel about that. Gracias. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. gracias amiga. I actually prefer it with the tahini. The tahini really gives it a good flavor. So that's what you think. Actually has a flavor with the tahini. For whomever has traveled the Yucatan Peninsula or been in the Caribbean island, there is a fruit that we call in guaya and has that flavor, but made, made out of a drink. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. All right, so we're all done here in Plaza Tapatio and we're headed back to where the cathedral is because there's one or two little things we need to show you and then we're on the bus for the yeah, rest of the no. day. Just as a fun fact, plaza means like square and also can, be, can mean mall. So just in case yeah. if you are improving your Spanish, that's... That is actually something I did not know. Yeah. All right, so it's just about 1 p.m. now and we're just about to hop onto the, the tourist bus. It's called Tapetia Tours. Yeah, and we're about to take a tour around Guadalajara. Hola, buenas tardes. Wonderful, right? And while we're here, the stop for the bus is actually another monument worth checking out, which Giovanni is going to say for you because it's very complicated. Rotonda de los Jaliscienses Illustres, which basically is the roundabout of the like distinguished people from the from Jalisco State. The Glorieta Minerva is basically like it's kind of like the Angel of Independence in Mexico City, like the main meeting point for like celebration or even protests. <laughs> taking the red route which is like the main loop of the, the city of Guadalajara thinking that there'd be like a ton of places for us to get off and see and come back on the bus. The other than Centro Historico there's not much to see other than city. So we actually going to take the other boat the other boat we're going to go to Zapopan area which is kind of like a, the, the upscale wealthy area of Guadalajara um, and I don't think we have time to get, grab some snacks because it's living in actually Five three minutes. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Zapopan. 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 So we're just going to have a look at this um, beautiful parish, parroquia, shrine. I'm not exactly sure what it is. We've only got about 10 minutes until the next bus comes. So yeah, it's going to just be a quick little look. Okay, well it seems like there's going to be a wedding here right now. So we can't actually go into the... Oh, and there's the bride. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, well since we can't go into the parish, we are starving. We haven't eaten anything since breakfast this morning. So we're quickly going to hop into this market, grab something very quickly and hop back onto the bus. Oh, are we missing it? Should we just try to grab it? Then? Yeah, let's try grab it. Okay. Gracias. Okay, so we didn't get anything to eat. We just got to hop off for like 10 minutes. The gap between like when they, you got dropped on the other side of the road to see this monument, actually 10, 10 minutes is not enough. No, it's not. You so. need like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that to be able to actually see the markets, be able to get some food. Hmm. Mm. It does give you a good orientation of the city and it's also a good opportunity to like see the see the city. Gracias. Gracias. Okay, we're going to find the tree man now. Oh, and there he is, the tree man. I'm sure he's got another name, but... Are you sitting in his ear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So he's not just a piece of art, he is actually like a lookout point. You can actually go all the way up 
it's not all the way it's actually just one flight up and you get this beautiful view i mean it's a really cool piece of art probably one of the more prominent landmarks to see here in central historical so we've been in contact with this really nice lady from the hotel her name is vienna she looks at our cameras and she said just be careful if you're standing along any of the main avenues where cars can go fast something that's actually become a big problem in guadalajara recently is guys on bicycles and motorbikes come past and they snatch your electronics out of your hand and then they're gone and so that's your stuff gone so just be just be aware specifically if you're like along these main avenues where there's bicycles and motorbikes just hold on to your electronics and your valuables or easy they can just run like into the other side of the road and, they and they're there. gone yeah now when we first started dating um we came to guadalajara as one of our first international trips and we came to this exact restaurant but i mean back then we just used to travel for fun so we didn't document where it was or what it was or anything like that so when we we're coming to guadalajara i was like we need to find that place and we just found that place because i remember it being really good and really cute so that's why we're bringing it back here now yeah we're actually walking the streets and say like where are we gonna find it we're like we tried to track this where there's no track <laughs> and then now we just we, we just found it. At, like at this place it looks familiar for me let's just keep walking two more blocks and that's it and then we found it yeah birreria birreria say it again birreria 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 one more time b b b Ria. 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 Hey y'all, it's so pretty and I'm so glad that we found this. It seems very local. I haven't seen one expat or tourist here. Everyone here is local. Other than me, but... Oh, it's delicious. I don't know. I got my sopa de tortilla. Tortillas. And basically it's um, a tomato base. You've got um, tostadas in there. There's cheese, there's avocado, and a whole lot of other things. I'm not sure, but I'm about to give it a try. I'm not disappointed. This is so tasty, and there's so many like textures and flavors, and you've got the crunchiness from the the tostadas and then the creaminess from like the cheese and the habits you have to try sopa de tortilla if you come to Guadalajara okay tell us what you got I got consomme de birria which basically is like this chew only, but it's only the, the liquid that you get out of that this meat is cooked with that Okay, interesting. Because it's very rich in like fat and, fat and grease and if you're hungover, it definitely will help you to, to cure it. To recover. <laughs> so we were just walking out of the restaurant where we just happened to notice the pictures on the wall and Felix Gallardo and Don Neto ate here. Guys, you don't even understand. We are obsessed with narcos and the two, two biggest stars, specifically Felix Gallardo, ate here. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> we love you. Oh, it's so good to be home. Will you oh. open the curtain? Los dos. Yeah. Well, after a very delicious lunch slash dinner. Yeah, and a, and a very long day exploring the city. We've got something very exciting planned for tomorrow. It's also going to be a full on day. So yeah, we'll see you then. We're taking a quick break from our 48-hour itinerary to tell you about the five-day trip we'd recommend adding to your plans if you have more time available. The first day trip we recommend from Guadalajara will be coming to Ajijic, which is a Pueblo Magico located right in front of Lake Chapala. Something we can recommend is walk down the Malecón and also do the hike into El Tepalo. Next would be the neighboring town of Ajijic, which is Chapala. This is great for a day trip, specifically if you want to take a boat tour out on Lake Chapala, or if you want to enjoy some fresh seafood right out in front of the lake. The next day trip to take would be to Tlaquepaque, which is only about 40 minutes outside of Guadalajara. There are not many activities to do in Tlaquepaque, however, it is one of the most beautiful and colorful Pueblo Mexicos we've ever seen. Oh, here's our friend! Hello, friend! Hello, friend! 
And probably the most popular day trip to take from Guadalajara would be to Tequila. It's about an hour and a half drive. We've come on like a full day tour where they're taking us all around the place, but you could just come here alone and explore Tequila Town by itself. There's a, a lot to do in one day. Because Tequila is the most popular day trip from Guadalajara, if you don't like crowds, we'd highly recommend avoiding the weekends and rather coming in the week. This is the most unique Pueblo Mexico that we've shown yet. We are actually in Sierra del Tigre, which is a mountain range, and this is actually an alpine town. Incredibly beautiful. There's, you've got a beautiful Pueblo Mexico to walk around, and then there's also a lot of activities to do within the forest. So we got up really early this morning. I'm sure you can see my eye bags. This was our table from yesterday. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. It's currently the middle of October, so Dia de Muertos is coming up. So they've actually set up um, like Dia de Muertos inspired decorations all over the buffet, which is really cute. Yeah, we came for a very, very early breakfast because we've got a big day ahead of us. Eggs, chilaquiles. Always. Giovanni is team rojo and I'm team verde. Frijoles. Oh, and beef. Eight. All right. Something about a buffet breakfast the bacon is always always good very good because i come from south africa our like traditional traditional tea is called rooibos translated from afrikaans because it's an afrikaans word is red bush they just came in showed me the the tea selection and they had rooibos there so i'm getting rooibos for breakfast it's like a little piece of home it's the right color home mm. oh that was a good breakfast i'm full we are heading out for the day Yep. Yeah, we're actually going to a nice place today, but we are actually running late because we need to catch a bus. Yes. Oh gosh, we've got like four minutes, so we're gonna run. Keep in mind what we're about to do now, you can only do on a Thursday or a Sunday. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're going on a day trip to Tonola, which is a kind of a, a municipality within Guadalajara. It's about 20 kilometers away. So you can of course get to Tonola by using either an Uber or by using a taxi. Both of those are options in, in the city of Guadalajara. What you pay for this bus tour is actually the most economical option. Yes, you do. it's more of a structured thing, so you do only have two hours in Tonola. But we're really just going to look at the Tianguis. That's the reason why we're going there today. So two hours, honestly, is more than enough for us. We're really out of the city now and we're really like starting to see the mountains in the distance. It's very beautiful, isn't it, my love? Okay, we have officially arrived in Tonola. So we'll be... Tonala. 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 Actually, this market or Tiangi dated even before the conquerors. So they've been trading in this area for a while. Yeah, and, wow. th and they were establishing themselves like every Thursday. Like, oh, that's very interesting. I hear so... it. From, I hear it from the tourist boss. Oh. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. This in Mexico is called the Tianguis. In South Africa, we call this a flea market. What do you guys call this in your country? Anna, my one. Yeah. What is that? Cocada, made out of coconuts. <laughs> Muchas gracias. So it looks like it's grated coconut. I don't want to break my teeth. Coconut and sugar. Can't say I would get it again, but it's interesting. Simon and I have a conflict with the, in terms of the candies we get in Mexico because, of course, for me, my candies I'm, for me, I'm used to and for me are good. But I understand the side of Simon that the candies or sweets that they produce in South Africa are different and, yeah and no, very good so our really really lovely neighbor steve thank you so much steve is looking after our baby ted so we're getting him a souvenir from um, tonola man they literally have something of everything here if you're looking for food they've got food if you're looking for leather shoes they've got leather shoes you're looking for wooden spoons they've got that as well they've got everything here <laughs> So they're actually busy making the um, 
that tortilla is right here in front of you. That is awesome. Yeah, I think so. Let's do it. Yeah. As in every market in Mexico, you have to eat street food. That's what we're gonna do right now. You've also got to be aware that like street food can make you sick if you've got a very weak stomach. Giovanni and I are used to eating street food, so we should be fine. Touching wood. <laughs> what doesn't kill you make you stronger. It doesn't. It it doesn't make you strong, give you a hectic diarrhea. Ask Giovanni, he will know. Yeah. Okay, so, like Giovanni was saying, this is called a orache. Orache. Because it's in the same shape as the sandal. Okay. Ooh, so we've got a bit of the base, the cheese, the salsa verde, the meat, the cream. We definitely should have shared what between the two of us is going to be very filling. So I asked the lady what do they have to, to for a drink and she said something that I have never heard which is called Tony Cole. Seems that it's like vanilla flavor soda. I, I like it but I don't think Simone is going to like it. You want to give it a try? It's actually not as bad as... A, yeah, it's not bad. I would have that again. Well, it's now time to get back to the bus. When we first landed here and we saw the town, we were like, wow, two hours here is actually going to be a lot of time. Went like that, literally like that. So now we're rushing back to the bus. Oh, headed back to Centro Historico. What is the rush? Yeah. We missed this bus, then we've got like another two hours here and that would be way too long. Muy bien, muy bonito. We just made it. We are back in Centro Historico and about to head to our next spot, which is something I've been super excited for. Okay. Oh, we are back! Man, something that I will say is Centro Historico on a Sunday is crazy busy. Firstly, there's like a ton of stuff going on, but there are thousands of people around I mean, here. In, a, in every Centro Historico in Mexico, there's something going on, like if you have yeah. clowns or fairs or anything is happening in Centro yeah. Historico, I mean in the center of it, the city. Exactly, but specifically Sunday, this has been the busiest day we've seen it so far, I mean it makes sense. So we're in our second last stop of the day, which is Mariachi Plaza, which is obviously where you're going to find the mariachi. Mariachi are actually from the state of Jalisco, so if you want to do something that is very culturally important here, we'd highly recommend coming here. Only thing to note is this is a little bit away from Centro Historico, and we'd probably advise just being a little bit more diligent and aware of your surroundings. Typically, mariachi band starts from 5 to 11 members, but the number can go higher. To be honest, we were expecting there to be like a ton of mariachis here. Seems to be only two different groups. So we're going to yeah. go choose one and get them to perform for us. come to Guadalajara and don't ask for the song of Guadalajara which is very typical I think it's like icon actually not only for the Guadalajara city if not for, for Mexico for Mexico yeah Guadalajara, Guadalajara. They actually <laughs> sang very very they, very, they were very good they actually seem to be having fun something that um, we've noticed with like performances in Mexico you know a lot of people seem to just be doing it to be doing it but these guys seem to yeah. be actually be having fun so I really enjoyed watching them <laughs> Mexico Lindo is also a favorite in Mexico. Ancielito Lindo. Yeah, Ancielito Lindo. But if you're in Guadalajara, you've got to get Guadalajara, Guadalajara. Just as we started our 48 hours in Guadalajara in Centro Historico, this is exactly where we're going to be ending it. We're going to actually have sunset drinks up at the bar that we believe probably has the best view of the cathedral. I think. Hands the, down. The best view. Yeah, so. Way up 
¿Qué piso va? Seis. Guadalajara, Guadalajara. Yo te puse de... So Jibani and I actually came to the spa the first night we arrived in Guadalajara and the view and the sunset was just absolutely spectacular so that's why we wanted to spend our last night here. If you're a rooftop bar kind of person this is definitely where you're going to find the best view of the city plus they've got some really beautiful cocktails. The bar itself is stunning. If you're in Guadalajara you need to try the Minerva beer which is traditionally from here as you might know Minerva roundabout is in honor or the beer is in honor to that. Yeah. Salud. It's a little bit like sourry. So you can taste that it's more like normal beer. Yeah. So there you go, that's 48 hours in Guadalajara. I feel like the time went by like that. Again, Guadalajara is one of Mexico's largest cities, so I think we saw like that much of the city. But what we did see, we really enjoyed. Please let us know in the comments if we missed any important spot here in Guadalajara so we can visit next time. If you liked today's video, please give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel, and that being said, we will see you in the next episode. Hasta luego! Join us in the next episode where we take you to the colorful Pueblo Magico of Tlaquepaque. <laughs>